Well, hello, Freedom Forgers. It's Patriot Gal here, and welcome to another episode of the Forging Freedom podcast. And tonight we're going to be talking about five fantastic ways to use garlic scapes. I just, you know, I, I learned a long time ago that you could eat garlic scapes, but I really didn't have any ways to use them. And I've been learning some new ways to um, use the scapes, and it's just been so much fun. And they are just so delicious. So welcome everybody, and I'm glad that you're here with us. Uh, yeah, it's the Forging Freedom podcast, and where it's our mission to help you build personal liberty one step at a time. And uh, some of the ways we do that is through gardening. And so I'm glad that you guys are here with us this evening. So today is Friday, June 23rd. And tonight we're going to talk about the five fantastic ways to use garlic scapes. And if you don't know what a garlic scape is, stay tuned because you're going to find out. Okay, so let me just give you the week recap. It's been another crazy week here at the Forging Freedom Homestead. Uh, we harvested 23 meat rabbits this week. They were about 13 or 14 weeks old. I usually don't let them go past 12 uh, weeks, but... Uh, you know, some things were going on, and I had uh, a person that wanted some, but they couldn't take them um, during week week 12, and so we needed to wait for a little bit. So they turned out beautifully. I, I butchered 10 one day and 10 the next day, and they were absolutely beautiful. 
Uh, they all weighed about three pounds when they were completely dressed out. That's about the average, about three pounds, somewhere a little more, somewhere a little less, but they were all pretty uniform. And while I was doing the um, harvesting process, my granddaughter stopped by with her friend, and I had a chance to educate both of them in the process and suggested that they give it a try, which they did. And I have a little video of that, which I'll probably share with you guys later if I can get it off of my phone uh, during this broadcast, then I will upload it and share that with you. It was pretty cute watching them guys. Um, I also found out that some kind of ground rodent is harvesting my strawberries. So I'm making a, com a plan to compact those little guys uh, next year. Uh, my plan is, I don't think they're going to like the garlic too much. And so I think my plan is to plant the garlic where the strawberries are, move the strawberries more inland in the garden and um, away from the fringe. Um, the box that they're attacking is right by the edge of my garden and, and beyond that is a big field. So I think it's a uh, pretty convenient for them to come in out of the field. I don't know that it's a mole. Um, I've heard that moles are pretty much bug eaters. Um, these are definitely eating my strawberries and I've had them eat uh, the roots of my um, squash before. I've also had them get into my potatoes before. So um, yeah, that's a good idea. Put some hot peppers. I got a few extra of those. I can throw them down the hole and see if that helps out. Um, if you watch over there at American Homestead, uh, I think it's called the American Homestead, Zach over there has had a same problem this year. Uh, something he noticed that his potato plants were just dead and he went out there and looked and they were um, eating his potatoes. They also wiped out all of his zucchini roots and uh, the zucchini that he was trying to grow this year. Okay, so um, on to the main topic of the show. We're going to talk about the garlic scapes. Now, garlic scapes are basically, you can see a picture of them here on the screen. Um, that's what they look like. That's a big bag that I harvested today. And they they only grow on the like the hard neck garlic. And it's just, it's that hard neck of the garlic. It comes up and it's going to eventually be the flower of the garlic. And to get really big garlic, you want to make sure that you cut that off. I always knew that, um, but it wasn't until later that I found that, that they were edible. And actually, they're quite sought after at farmer's markets and um, in culinary circles. And so, anyway, um, that is what they look like. And let me just tell you how you harvest them. So you're going to go down on the stem and you're going to go to that first leaf where the first leaf connects to the stem where your scape is and you're just going to cut it off right there and I, I always whack them off at an angle um, I just think that that's better if it rains or something um, to not get your have sitting water on top of a flat stem so let me just um, I'm trying to do two screens here guys so stand by so uh, this is my bag of scapes that I harvested today and hopefully the scene will change soon. Anyway, that was my bag of scapes. And you can see that they have the little white part um, at the top. That's the, um, the little flower part. And then they've got this long stem. And let me just show you. I'm, I've got a picture of me just holding one scape. That's basically what they look like. And um, so when you're harvesting these, after you get them cut off, what you want to do is you want to do kind of like what I do with asparagus. So you want to start at the end where you cut it off and just kind of bend it. And it, you'll find that it's kind of woody usually at that end. And you kind of want to keep bending it until it gets up to a tender part and just snaps. You're going to throw that, uh, that woody part away. And then you'll find that up there at the flower end, it'll do the same thing. They'll be, it'll be really flexible, and then you'll find a part where it just snaps. And the part that you want to keep is that part in the middle. And um, anyway, we're going to talk about some fun ways that you can use these. And they have a garlicky taste, but they're not as strong as garlic. Um, they're kind of more of a mild, delicate flavor. 
And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about them. Okay, so the first way that you can use them is you can cut them into like three inch pieces. And let me just get to that picture here. So you can just cut them into like a three inch piece and you can just put them in a jar and you can pickle them like you would a green bean. So if you've ever had pickled green beans, um, this is a similar thing. And so let me just show you what that looks like. I've got some in the bottles here ready to pour the pickling solution over there. And this should, you know, you just find yourself a good recipe for pickled green beans or you can use your your um, whatever dill uh, type brine that you use to do dill pickles. You can use that. And um, these are just, for us anyway, they're just going to be a refrigerator um, pickle. So, excuse me, I didn't can these. I just heated the brine to boiling and poured it over top of these scapes. Put a grape leaf on top to hold them down into the uh, solution. And then I um, just put them in the refrigerator. So that's what we're going to do with those. And I'll let you, I'll have to let you know how they turn out because this is all new to me. So that's the first way that you can use them. Uh, the second way, and I don't have a picture of this because I'm going to make it later, but you can make a garlic pesto. So you can take, um, you can freeze, uh, freeze the scapes for later and uh, you can make a garlic pesto. So I've made pesto out of basil before, but I also love to make it out of cilantro. And so apparently you can use, like if it calls for say two cups of basil or two cups of cilantro, you can use um, up to half of that in garlic scapes. And you can just, you know, whip them up and make some pesto in a blender. And I've got to think that that would be just delicious over pasta. So I'm looking forward to trying that. So um, the third way that you can use them is you can just use them in recipes and you can just freeze them for later. So you can see here I've got a bag of scapes that I've chopped in about two inch pieces that I'm just putting in the freezer. Um, I don't know if this is changing for you guys. Um, when I change the scene or not, how quickly it's changing. But anyway, hopefully this is all coordinating. Um, but anyway, you can freeze them for later and you can just use them in, you know, any dish that you would use, um, you know, garlic in. Uh, hey, welcome, Hupple's Cat. Uh, just had scapes in my salad. The garlic pesto was awesome. Had some nettle pesto this week. Very good and interesting. Oh, man, that's, I'm, I'm so excited to try the garlic pesto. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to tell you tonight that I that I have made before is, oh man, it's like the food of the gods. It's so cool. So we're going to talk about that one right now. So let me just show you the picture of that. All right, here we go. There we go. And yeah, just wait for that screen to change here. All right, so what I've done in this next segment. Come on now. There we go. What you're looking at in that bowl there is a pound of butter with scapes blended in. So what I did is I took a cup of scapes and put them in the blender. Then I took a half a cup of water and I pureed the whole thing. Then I uh, partially melted a pound of butter and then I put it in the blender and just whipped it all up. So this is whipped scape butter. And I have made this before. And let me just tell you, I'm just going to warn you now that if... Oh, I'm sorry. There's a motorcycle driving past the house. And this microphone just picks up everything. <laughs> anyway, um, if if you guys make this and taste it, I, I'm telling you, it's dangerous because it is delicious. We took a loaf of French bread and spread the scape butter on it and then toasted it in the oven. And oh my gosh, was it good. It was just so delicious. So I have made a pound of this and I'm put, I've put i put that in the freezer as well to just take it out and use a little bit of a, a time. I, I'd like to think that I'm going to save some for winter, but I don't know if it's going to last that long. <laughs> Andrew says, just planted some blackberries and raspberries and strawberries in a... A Jostaberry or Hostaberry? 
and a black currant. I'm not um, familiar with the the Josta berry. Tell us more about that. Um, so anyway, that is the other thing that I did. And then the other thing that you can do with escapes is you can use them um, in a stir fry. And so I'm just going to save some of these, you know, that I'm freezing to use them in stir fries later. And the nice thing I like about everything I've read about the garlic scapes, you don't have to blanch them or anything. You can just cut them up and put them in a freezer bag and, and bring them out later. And that makes me happy because I, I just don't have the time to blanch anything right now. So those are the five ways that you can use garlic scapes. I'm sure there's a lot more. Um, scapes in your salad, um, that's, yeah, that's just obvious. That sounds really good. I've used them, I've chopped them up and put them in scrambled eggs. Just, I've, I've chopped them up and put them in marinades um, over top of uh, fish. I'm, I'm really excited to try the garlic scape butter on some salmon. I think it would be absolutely delicious. Okay, so host, is it hosta berry like H or just a berry like J? I'm just wondering. So a cross between a black currant and a gooseberry. More common in Europe and Canada. Ooh, tofu scramble. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. So a cross between a black currant and a gooseberry. That would be... Okay, the J. Yeah. Okay, got it. All right, that's like super interesting. So it looks like we've had another person join us. I don't know who you are, but feel free to chat in. Oh, yeah, I just... I love the perennials, right? I'm I'm starting to move more towards perennials instead of annuals in the garden because, you know, frankly, they're just a lot less work. Um, and it's not that I'm going to get rid of my annuals, but I just like the idea of, you know, you plant them once and they're they're there forever. This year I bought a whole bunch of Russian uh, mulberry. Uh, it's it's uh, tolerant down to I think zone four uh, hence the Russia part but it's the white mulberry it's not the uh, red mulberry and uh, the red mulberries I don't think will make it in my area I'm zone five sometimes zone four so I've got those they're in pots right now they're they were pretty small trees I've got them in pots and in partial shade right now and I water them about every third day but I'm looking forward to planting those in the fall and uh, probably gonna do a swell and plant those along the swell with some other stuff. also have some elderberries that I'm going to plant this fall um, in, a, in a swell type situation. We have wild elderberries in my area, but I just like the idea of having them in, you know, in the homestead. Um, I like to, you know, I'm just trying to build a more resilient um, homestead so that, you know, this homestead its whole job is to take care of the people that live here. We take care of it, and it takes care of us. Let's see. Birds eat all your fruits. Too lazy to net them. You know, Hupple's cat. I just I I garden in a in four by eight uh, raised beds, and I, I'm with you. I was too lazy to net them either. But what I did this year is I I built a system out of PVC, and it was pretty simple to do. What I did was I just um, I'll have to put a link in this show to, it's called One Yard Revolution, the One Yard Revolution YouTube channel. And this guy um, over there, I wish I could remember his name right now, but I don't. I'm not doing him justice at all. But he's got a fantastic channel, Backyard Gardening. And he shows how he made this um, this cold frame um, by putting, uh, he made a frame of two befores, and then he took half inch PVC caps, drilled a hole through them, put a grabber screw in, and then screwed it to the frame, one on each side, and then he arches PVC over to these caps. So I did that, and I made, um, on the on the 4x8 bed, I made three of those. And then I took some plastic hose that was, uh, it's like, uh, it's uh, mainline tubing, and I think it's about an inch in diameter. Some we just had laying around. I cut some four inch sections of that and slid it down the side and use those for clamps to hold the netting on the PVC and then I also put uh, grabber screws uh, in the in the frame itself you know the, the garden box itself 
not screwed in all the way so that I can hook the netting on those down at the bottom. And I've got those about every foot. And um, so I've got that over my strawberries this year, and I thought I was good. I kept the birds out, but if you were listening earlier, you heard that I've got some kind of ground rodent that has invaded one of my boxes and is stealing all the strawberries. I've got quite a few. I've got two boxes of strawberries, and I've got a good harvest out of the other one. They haven't found that one yet, but um, yeah, Huffles Cat, you know, I'll try to do a video on that and get it up uh, for you so that you can see. It was super, super easy. Um, so for the 4x8 bed, it would be six caps and probably you could get away with uh, two or three, yeah, probably two pieces of PVC. Um, he even had a, and I don't remember it right now, but he had a formula that you use. Uh, you know, math was not my thing in school, but uh, I have calculators, so I'm good. But um, he has a formula that you can use uh, by measuring your bed, and then you can figure out what uh, the, a half circle would be for your width of bed and I did that and it worked out perfect and that's the length that I cut the uh, pipe to but yeah it worked super great I'm I'm excited and I love to build that infrastructure that is gonna last year after year after year you know that I'm not gonna have to redo every year so that was kind of cool all right so um let's see if I've missed anything <laughs> yeah the robins they've been eye eyeballing my stuff too usually they're a lot more aggressive than they have been this year but I've got a lot of magpies around this year and they eat baby robins unfortunately I, I would rather have the robins around than the than the magpies but um, they've been harvesting a lot of baby robins oh uh, but anyway so um, yeah it's it's amazing how they it's amazing how they can just know when things are going to be ripe, right? So I did have one little gardening tragedy this week. Um, I have everything on a drip system and everything's on timers. I have everything on timers. Like I've got the rabbit watering system on a timer. It's an automatic watering system. I have an automatic misting system for the rabbits. It's on the timer. I also have the drip system for the garden is on a timer. The chicken water is on a timer. Everything's on a timer. Uh, it just allows me to do more without having to manually do those tasks every day and so but um, I didn't realize my when I was on vacation uh, down to Lake Powell earlier this spring I had my grandson house sitting and we had a late freeze that came in while we were gone and he called me and told me that something had froze on the automatic watering system or broke but he kinda had it rigged back together and what had froze was it's an inline pressure regulator that uh, keeps the pressure down to say 30, 25, 30 pounds right in there so it doesn't blow your, um, oh sorry, I'm a little tired today, your uh, drip system lying apart. And so that froze and I've been meaning to replace that and I hadn't. He had found a kind of a collar to, to replace it but I hadn't replaced it. What I didn't realize was that the, whatever he, it was that he kind of rigged up was leaking on the back side and the water was dripping down into my timer. Now it's water resistant, but it was dripping in such a way that it got into the internals of the timer and fried it, unbeknownst to me. And that was the timer that went to the main garden. And I noticed that some of the plants were just looking really bad, you know. So um, I think that it's been off for about a week. That's what the best I can figure. So I got that fixed and got everything watered back up. But it, I think it prematurely kicked my gar my garlic into uh, you know, going to um, well, be, well, being ready to harvest, but it's not as big as it probably would have been had I had the water. And the potatoes definitely have suffered. That was another clue. The potatoes all fell over, and I knew it wasn't time for them to be ready yet. So, yeah, I had that little snafu this week, but I've got that all fixed. And it says, Andrew says that he got eight blueberry bushes to plant. Andrew, you are just going to town. It sounds like you are on an ambitious tear to get your homestead rocking and rolling. So that is awesome. Looks like we've had another person join us. Uh, I don't know who that is. Haven't seen anything from them yet, but welcome. Thanks for joining us. And if you are just joining us and you are looking to hear about the garlic, 
Um, we talked about that earlier in the podcast, and it's all there for you if you missed it. I think you can back up and listen to it, or you can just simply listen to it later. Hey, Music Well, nice to see you here. Hey, Guido, hello. And Susan and the Minuteman Homestead. Hey, you guys, thanks, thanks for all coming on over. I appreciate that. So I was just saying that if you were here to hear about the garlic scapes, we talked about that already. And I hope you guys will um, listen to it again so you can catch all that. So, okay, right now, guys, we're just going to see what everybody's been up to this week. So, um, welcome, everybody. <laughs> yeah, Minute Man always catches me in, in, in the morning. I appreciate that, Minute Man. You are a loyal listener, and I appreciate that so much. And if you guys love great music, you need to get over there and listen to the Minute Man Homestead. He um, does uh, pirate radio on YouTube, and I think I've always seen you on Fridays. Is there another day that you do it, uh, Minute Man? Let us know. Uh, feel free to plug your channels here or um, subscribe to each other's channels that's what it's all about right building a community so um, I, I love listening to um, the Minuteman Homestead's pirate radio it's just really a lot of fun and he takes requests over there so that if you um, have certain songs you want to listen to he takes requests and if you get on over there while he's live he'll tell you how to put your request in all right Let's see, I think everyone's coming over here. I'm <laughs> going to play randoms to keep the vid going. We'll check your vid in the, in the morning. Thanks so much, Minuteman. I appreciate you. So uh, if you want to uh, check over at Minuteman, he's, it sounds like he's doing a live um, right now. But he plays all kinds of music. And it's uh, it's like truly, um, you know, like peer-to-peer -peer radio over there. Because he takes your requests and you get to control what you listen to. So... It's uh, it's a it's a republic, um, <laughs> a direct republic kind of uh, government over there. <laughs> All right, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll pop back over there and and uh, let you let you know when I'm done, Minute Man. I appreciate the um, shout outs over there. All right, so what's everybody been up to this week? What have you done to forge your freedom this week? Uh, you know, we, we are dedicated to helping you live life on your terms and creating the life that you want to live. And uh, for us, uh, that consists of divorcing ourselves from a lot of these systems that keep us, you know, held down. Um, you know, I was just talking to a guy last night. I, I have a, another business that I run. And uh, it's an airport shuttle business. And I was bringing a guy in from the airport about 2.30 in the morning. And, um, you know, it's amazing how people will talk to you about different things. And he lives in the Bay Area of California. And he was just uh, describing to me what a relief it is for him to come out here to Utah. Uh, he's got a second home out here. And uh, he just feels like, you know, that everything's just so crazy town in California. And just... Um, you know, th the way they go through money and they're just taxing them to death and and everything is just so upside down over there and I could just feel the I could just feel the relief that he had from, you know, crossing the green curtain, I guess I would say. <laughs> it was like he was coming from a, a foreign country or something. And so... um you know, it's it's great that he has a place that he can get away. But I I sure pity anybody that's uh, living there. I, I was just reading. Um, I'm sorry. When I say uh, a lot, guys, it's I apologize. I know it's hard to listen to, but I'm thinking of what I want to say next. And so um, I'll try to get better at that. Anyway, I was reading an article today about the uh, I guess the, uh, one of the courts just struck down an appeal for the. Um, uh, oh, what do they call high capacity magazines on the guns over there and so basically one day I mean the way I understand it is one day you're a perfectly law abiding citizen owning a, a legal piece of equipment for your rifle or for your handgun and uh, with a swoop of a pen they made everybody a felon 
um, because you have a high capacity magazine. And so I, I'm hoping that they can, uh, I don't, I don't know if that's gone to the Supreme Court or not, but I'm, I'm really hoping that they can get that resolved because that's just crazy. Uh, you've either got, your choices are to turn it in, uh, to take it out of state and sell it, uh, or to be a felon. I mean, that's just, that's crazy land, right? Just crazy. Yeah, Pacific Pacific Permaculture. He's from he's from California. He could tell you his stories. <laughs> well, that's great, Pacific. He says my freedom is genuine, not a forgery. That's awesome. That's Huppel's cat says I sold my cottage, halved my mortgage debt. That is awesome. I applaud you for that. That is fantastic. You know, it it's amazing how little money you can get by on. And it's not that I'm a minimalist. I like nice things. You know, I like to spend money just like the next person does. But, you know, you it's amazing how free you can become when you when you get out of debt and how little money you actually have to make. And every step that you take, you know, whether it's growing your own food, if you're, you know, can get on solar power, you know, if you can cook your, for yourself and not go out to eat so much and which uh, automatically helps you eat better all these things are working towards your freedom all of these things take you away from systems um, you know it's it's easy to control a people when you control their water you control their power you control their food uh, you control it where they live it's pretty easy to control people but if you have all those things taken care of you're not so easy to control Look at what's going on in Venezuela. I've been following this thing in Venezuela for three years now, and I've just watched it spiral down, spiral down, and you know it's it's just horrible. These people can't even feed themselves, and uh, the government's just crushing them more and more and more. So, anyway, I'm just gonna looking through the comments here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Pacific says it's expensive here, meaning California, and a lot of greed. Music Well says Nashville shot down the new mayor's attempts towards uh, move towards becoming a sanctuary city. Hooray, Music Well. That is fantastic. I, I've never heard of such a ridiculous thing in all my life. Um, you know, openly coming out and saying you're going to defy federal law. Um, you know, I, I, I would realize if it was an unconstitutional federal law, this one's completely constitutional. It's, you know, spelled out in the Constitution that the president has the power to decide, you know, who comes from what countries. And I think it's, you know, well-established law that it's illegal to cross a border without permission. So uh, I've never heard of such a thing. It's It's been crazy land, hasn't it, these last eight, eight nine years? Just the things that we've seen uh, attempted. It's just been crazy. Uh, let's see, a uh, retirement idea for me, uh, this is Huppel's cat, retirement idea for me in not that many years now. Okay, and uh, let's see, Susan Sullivan says RVers. Uh, is that what you're going to do, is do do RVing? I, we've, we considered that. Let's see, uh, Pacific says we need a stand your ground law here. Crime would drop very fast. Yeah. You know, an armed society is a polite society. I um, I heard something about uh, a shooting in California not too long ago, and uh, it sounded justified to me, but the guy that did the shooting got himself in trouble. Crazy. Hubble's cat says, We're both 52 and hope to retire at 56, which is possible. What a decent homestead with a lot of chickens. I think that's a fantastic, fantastic goal. That's great. Try to save some cash just in case. Yep, you need some cash, um, uh, you know, and not in the bank. I mean, you, you look what happened in Venezuela and Argentina a few years ago. Uh, people had a lot of money in the bank and just one day went to the bank and they said, sorry, we don't have that much cash here. And then the next day they didn't open their doors. So, you know, it's something that you've got to keep in mind. Keep diversified. That's the best advice that I can give you is keep don't keep your eggs all in one basket. 
don't keep it all in gold, don't keep it all in silver, um, you know, don't keep it all in cash, don't keep it all in stocks. You got to be spread out. Even some cryptocurrency, not a bad idea as far as I'm concerned. I have a little cryptocurrency and, um, you know, but I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket. I learned that lesson a long time ago. Let's see, Music Well says, I'm looking at four acres with some adjoining property opportunities in mid-July. I've got 10 years or so before I can think about retiring. Well, that is just great. I love to see it. Um, when Nash, let's see, Music Well says, when Nashville flipped Democrat, we knew things were going to get, oh, where, where'd it go? Really crazy. Yeah, and see, I think that is the strategy, and, and you know, we probably have, uh, some liberal people that listen to this and you know we love you we don't hate you we just happen to think here at the forging freedom F podcast that the uh, free market system is the best system in the world that it's created more wealth and brought more people out of poverty than any other system uh, known to date until there's a better system that's a system that i'm going to embrace doesn't mean i'm a fan of uh, oligarchies or or big corporations that do evil things it's just that i'm i'm all for free market principles, especially amongst homesteaders. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's one tactic of the left is to just control the population centers. And a lot of the folks that are in, in population centers are poor and they're looking for handouts or they, maybe they're not looking for handouts, but maybe they just don't know any other way. Uh, if you're a third generation welfare recipient what else what else do you know you know and so uh, they they're able to control the population centers which um, as we see if you look at a map of the last presidential election you can see that the whole country is red there's just a few blue spots on there and those are the huge population centers of the west and the east coast and um, you know you can see that the country's pretty much split down the middle on how they feel about the presidency okay so um susan sullivan says living in a 33 foot trailer with three slides now susan i think i follow you on your channel didn't you guys just buy a um home a little homestead home that you're rehabbing i think that's it let's see man uh doo -doo -doo. there we go Minuteman. I'm sorry, Minuteman. I didn't mean to poach your listeners. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat what he said, but uh, y'all can see it if you're here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, anyway, I appreciate you guys' support. I just appreciate you guys so much being here. You know, you, you start one of these things. You don't know if anybody's going to pay attention, if you've got anything to say that means anything. But, you know, I love... I love America. I love my country. I love freedom. I doesn't mean that I blindly follow my my government. Um, I sometimes I agree with them and sometimes I don't. I I think in my twenties I was uh, I I, re I voted for Clinton in my twenties. You know I was young and he said he was going to help the poor and that sounded like a good idea to me. And you know I was young. I didn't realize that <laughs> politicians lie lie lie. And um, I, I didn't realize I, I hadn't had ex it explained to me growing up. No, politics was never talked about growing up. I knew we, our family had certain ideals and I believed in those ideals. And I've come to recognize since then that those were conservative ideals. But uh, nobody really talked about it, you know. And um, I remember when I told my grandparents that I voted for Bill Clinton because he was going to help the poor. I thought I thought they were going to absolutely die. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I'm just trying to catch up with these comments here. I, de I definitely want to talk to you guys about what's interesting to you. Let's see, Huppel's Cat. So using cash is getting harder and harder up here in Canada. Yeah, there's an absolute war on cash. Um, and it started in Europe and it's coming this way. And uh, people look at me so strange. Like, you know, uh, I go to, uh, what's the name of that place where you buy the tools? Harbor Freight. And the first thing they ask you when you step up Harbor Freight is, what's your phone number? And I said, I just tell them, I, just, I says, I'm not, uh, I don't give out my phone number. And, well, we need that to look you up. I said, no, you don't, because I'm paying cash. And, you know, watching them try to make change 
for my 20 is absolutely painful watching them. And, you know, you have to be careful because if you, you know, there's a, a bulletin that come out from the uh, Homeland Security that people, banks in different places are supposed to keep an eye out for people that are using lots of cash. I will tell you one trick that I do is I deposit cash from time to time, just enough to pay my bills. And um, I use an ATM that lets you deposit the cash because I, while I know that there's a human, and it's not that I'm doing anything illegal, okay? I'm just, I just don't like the eyeballs on my business. So I will deposit cash using the ATM because I know that there's less eyeballs on that. I mean, I know somebody looks at a report somewhere, but uh, it's different than when you hand a teller, you know, uh, several hundred dollar bills and they don't see that that often. Uh, they usually see a check comes in or a direct deposit or something like that. So anyway, I'm going to try to catch up with the comments here. Pacific Permaculture says, try to build community where you live. Share the surplus food. That's a great, great idea. Um, I think that's wise, wise advice. Let's see here. <laughs> Minute Man says, don't be sorry I sent them here. No, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a polite person, Minute Man, and I never want to take anything for granted. <laughs> I have totally lost my way in these comments here. I am just, I don't know if I need to go up or down here. Let me see if I can figure it out. Okay. All right. Cash is getting harder. Okay, here we go. M uh, Music Will says, cash is so close to being gone for good. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is to that. I, I don't know what the answer I think the answer is to be the least dependent as possible that you that you don't have to have use money, more or less. I think you just have to be in a position where they you don't have to use cash that often, you know? Um and, and play the game where you have to. Uh, uh interact with the edges when you have to, but Try to run your own game. Let's see. It's very tricky. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys are teaching people to grow food. That's fantastic. If uh, Pacific says, if you start working, you'll never get the bulk of handouts. You've proved you can work. Yeah, it's true. And uh, nor do I want them. I don't want handouts because I know that there's nothing free in this world, and that sooner or later. If somebody gives me something free, they're going to want something in return. They're going to want a favor. Uh, they're going to want to control the way I think. Something like that. Uh, Susan Sullivan says, two acres undeveloped. That's what she's uh, looking to homestead. That's fantastic. Andrew says, also, you got the guys that think that everyone on welfare are just users. Yeah, I don't think that everyone on welfare are just users. I, I know there's a, a a segment that are because I've met them you know when I was a single single mom I had people all around me explaining to me how to use and abuse the system and uh, so I know they're out there and I also know that there are people who you know desperately need that help um, sorry about the dog I'm not sure what's got his hair up but he's upset about something um, but yeah there's definitely people who need it and uh, stand by, guys. Let me just see if I can see what the heck his problem is. Stand by. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Apparently there was a cat or something out there. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so um, let's see. Let me get back to the comments here. Yeah, Andrew says, problem is some folks are stuck in a vicious cycle, and that is true. That is absolutely true. Um, you know, I and I, I've seen some ways that people can get out of that. I think that if the government, not that I expect them to do this because I don't think they have any, mm, there's no benefit for the government to do this, but if I was in charge, I would make a work requirement part of welfare. And, you know, even if you were handicapped in some way, there's things that you could do. Um, you know, if you needed to do internet work or something like that, but I think there needs to be a work component to welfare. I think that would quickly um, separate the users and the abusers uh, from from that system. And obviously, there's some people that just either they're mentally incapacitated to where they can't, you know, function in that way. But, you know, there could be allowances made for that. So I would like to see a work component. Music Well, thank you so much for helping us to promote our Facebook group. I really appreciate that. And uh, let's see. Pebbles Cat says, I usually miss you during due, due to working shifts. Yeah, that's the great thing about this is that you can listen to it later. You don't get the interaction, but um, if there's a time that works better, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm watching my viewership and watching to see what time people tune in. So I'm trying to work for the best time based on the numbers. Yeah, they are liars. That's no doubt about that. Hey, Coco Noel, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Minuteman, what's your phone number? <laughs> yeah, they track everything. Yeah, they're not getting my phone number. My my husband has a different opinion. He he just doesn't care. But uh, yeah, I'm just not going down that road. Oh my gosh, I have lost the comments again. Hey, Mad No Matter, thanks for stopping in. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, phone number and email and postal code. Never get them from me. Yeah. I I actually was in. Okay, check this out. So I went to get my hair cut. <laughs> right? I went to get my hair cut. And the girl goes, what's your phone number? And I says, I don't give that out. She says, we need to look you up in the system. And I says, I don't want to be in your system. And she says, well, if you're not in the system, we can't cut your hair. And I says, look, honey. I says, there are places all over the city where I can give them a $20 bill and they will cut my hair. I said, so don't tell me you can't cut my hair because I'm not in your system. About this time, you know, my voice was getting a little elevated. I didn't yell at her. I was polite, but I, you know, I was getting, the volume was up. And so a manager shows up and I explained to her that I just want to get a damn haircut and I want to pay for it. And I really don't want to give out any personal information. And I don't really see what the problem is. And um, she, you know, finally uh, uh, educated the girl that, no, I don't have to be in the system to uh, have my hair cut. But, uh, yeah, so it's crazy. And I know we're way off topic here, but we've already done the garlic thing. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Andrew says, I have a disability, and I think I'm getting my SSI through Obamacare or something depending on how Trump goes, lots of disabled people might get in trouble. You know, I think there's a lot of fear tactics out there, Andrew. I'm not sure that that's true. I think the only thing, for one thing, they're not um, they're not uh, <laughs> able to get anything through right now, it seems. Um, so who knows what it's going to be. But I really believe that they're not going to go after disabled people. I, I, I just don't believe that. So hang tight man I think it's going to be okay there's there's a lot of there's a lot of fear mongering on both sides it's what they do uh, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle and uh, I'm just seeing who okay I also have almost three minutes of lag before it hits us and when we can chat I'll see if we can fix that okay great I would appreciate that yeah let's see um, had a relative in need was not allowed the the good checks. Yeah, no free lunch. All right. Uh, 
Well, I'm not going to be able to read all these guys, so I'm just going to scroll down to maybe where the end here. Had <laughs> Pacific Pro Culture. I had my first haircut in six and a half years last year, so no worries here. <laughs> Hey, guess who's stopped in? My dad's here. Hey, dad, nice to see you here. Yeah, so we're just talking about all kinds of different things. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, you know what I did? I, I was thinking the other day, I hear about, uh, oh, about, it's been about a year now, I guess. I thought to myself, you know, if I don't, if I don't get my haircut, I don't have to pay for haircuts anymore. <laughs> so I, um, I just haven't been getting my haircut. Uh, I mean, I've been get, getting it trimmed, but I've, I'm growing it out really long. It's uh, saved me a lot of money. So, <laughs> all right. I'm glad that everybody could stop by tonight. And um, yeah, what else you guys want to talk about? You know, we talked about cash going away. Um, like I say, I just think, you know, prepare, you guys. Just keep just keep prepping. Just keep, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a hardcore prepper. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not, you know, expecting a uh, coronal mass ejection or a um, EMP. Although I know those things are possible. I mean, I, I know they're possible. Uh, and maybe the EMP more probable than the CME, you know. Um, but uh, I just know, I just want to live like my ancestors did. You know, they were more prepared than we are now. They had a pantry that was full of food. They know how to fix things. And, uh, hey, Andrew, thanks for stopping by, buddy. Yeah, don't throw your scapes away, Dad. <laughs> You'll have to watch this when it, uh, when it, um, when you can watch from the beginning because I found out some fun ways to use it. <laughs> oh, but anyway, thanks for stopping by, Andrew. I appreciate that. Scissors are cheap, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable cutting my own hair. I, there's just, there's some things that I am um, pretty good at doing, but that is not one of them. I do cut my bangs because I figure if I goof it up, I can always let it grow out. <laughs> Uh, Susan says she dehydrates a lot of stuff. Yeah, I dehydrate some stuff too. I, I've been dehydrating a lot of oregano this year. Um, Miniman says he agrees the EMP is more possible, but a civil war is m more possible um, at the moment, and it's already happening. Yeah, I, I think that's probably, as far as a national threat, that is probably our number one threat right now. I mean, if you... Um, I tend to, I tend to, um, prepare for the things that are most likely and in doing that, and maybe I'll do a, a video on this one time, one of these days, but, uh, I learned this concept from Jack over at the, um, uh, survival podcast. And I think it's a good philosophy. Uh, you pre prepare for the things that are most likely to happen. And as you do that, it prepares you for the things that are may be less likely to happen. Um, you're always going to need food. You know, food has been used to control populations uh, since time began almost. And so um, if you can provide your food, you're, you know, you look at any war situation that's gone on, wh whether you're in the country where the war is going on or whether you're, you know, at the home front. Um, there's rationing that goes on. It's it's just, you know, food is a thing. And I think if you get your food covered, uh, food and water, you're really ahead of probably 95% of the people. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Susan says she quit cutting her hair too. Yeah, you know, when I was selling real estate, I used to make... I had a pretty fair income and I used to, you know, I used to pay a hundred dollars to get my hair cut, you know, by a stylist with the fancy shampoos and all that. And I look at that now and I'm like, what the heck was wrong with me? That's crazy. Yeah. I can't believe I ever did that. 
Pacific permaculture ever hear of zero currency? The guy there went 12 years without money. Don't buy rice anymore, Fukushima. Food is more valuable than gold or silver in a collapse. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. Uh, these people who think that gold and silver is going to be good in a collapse, I think are wrong. I think it's good for when the collapse is over. And history has proved that, that it is a way to preserve your wealth um, so that after the crash, after the crisis, when things normalize, that you have preserved your wealth. Uh, when you look at what happened in Argentina, uh, they, you know, devalued the currency so much. You know, I think it was something like you could bring in a thousand of their, I don't know if it's pesos or whatever, and, and get one new peso. And so, you know, if you had $10,000 in the bank, all of a sudden now you had $1 and then they repriced everything. So that just wiped a lot of people out. But if you've, you know, if you've got gold or silver, you can take that to another country um, and uh, change it for another currency. Or you can wait until the dust settles and then you can sell that gold or silver for the new currency once it's been revalued and now all the dust is settled. But as far as precious metals being valuable during a crisis uh, during a time when people are starving yeah i think they're uh, pretty w much worthless i mean you know if there's uh, 10 people and one carrot and somebody's got a piece of gold and they offer you the gold for the carrot you're not going to give up the carrot it's just not not there <laughs> a clinton a clinton haircut three hundred dollars <laughs> yeah let's see yeah, food prices are climbing fast. Music, well, they, uh, I've just noticed in the last, the meat prices especially are crazy, just crazy. Now, I just sold enough rabbit. Um, this is my first breeding session of the year, you know, had just come to maturity this last week when I butchered the rabbits. And I sold enough rabbit to pay for my feed for, you know, the whole year and then some. And uh, so all the rabbit I get from here on out, which I should end up with probably another 60 rabbits in the freezer, it's all free because all my feed's been paid for. Plus, I feed them a lot of stuff that I grow around here. And so, you know, I think as far as meat food freedom, I think I've we're there, you know. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see what I've missed here. Yeah, I think we do export some rice to Japan. Uh, we have a lot more growing capacity than they do. They have very little land, actually. Susan says, I fix a five-gallon bucket of food every two weeks. That is a great plan. It's a great plan. <laughs> Kill them with the carrot and take their gold. I'm a pirate. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, yeah, BLM. Every time I see BLM, I never know if it means Bureau of Land Management or Black Lives Matter. <laughs> it depends on the context. Uh, BLM just destroyed, destroyed over 6,000 cows trying to take uh, cattle land for BS. Yeah, uh, that is the situation with that the Bundys were in, right? That Bundy thing um, down there in Arizona got spun so far out of control i mean those guys might be a little bit eccentric but the media spun that thing way way out of control um when they were up there in oregon you know they kept calling it an armed standoff and yeah the guys were armed but they were legally armed they weren't breaking any laws by being armed and they didn't point guns at anybody so that whole thing up there was just spun up and uh, just looking for an excuse to um, put the Patriots down. And they did end up uh, killing Lavoie. And I do believe that they murdered him. Yeah, the, I'm, I'm, thank goodness for the good people of Oregon that uh, acquitted the Bundys on those charges. I mean, <laughs> even the federal government, the, the, the worst charge they could come up with on that deal. I mean, what they were actually charged with, not brandishing a firearm. Not anything like that. It was impeding 
federal workers from doing their jobs. And, um, you know, the jury saw right through that and could see that nobody impeded anybody from doing anything. People were, will, read, you know, willing and able to come and go from the refuge, you know, as they wanted. Now, if people didn't feel like they wanted to go to work, that's a whole nother story. So the, the jury saw right through that. Let's hope that they get acquitted in Nevada as well, because that's just uh, some ridiculous power that the BLM has. Let's see, would have never happened if the government had to try to take their land. Yeah, I mean, my understanding of that situation, and I could be wrong, but they had, um, you know, actual title to that land uh, when Nevada was a territory before the BLM even existed. Their family was on that land. So, yeah, it's a it's a messed up situation. All right, guys, let's see. Yeah, be right back. Something wrong with my dog. Hey, I get that one. <laughs> yeah, I I do store rice. I do store beans, um, fresh food. Also, um, some canned stuff, some dehydrated stuff. Like I say, I don't really believe in, um, you know, keeping all my eggs in one basket. And I think it's good to have some skills to learn how to fix some things. I've been fixing a lot of things here. Uh, Pacific says it's some states it's illegal to collect rainwater yeah it was illegal here in Utah uh, up until recently they changed it I believe you can collect up to 500 gallons now but you have to have a permit to do it now the permit doesn't cost you anything but they want to know who you are and uh, I say mm, ixnay to that because uh, I believe the only reason they want to have you licensed is so they know where to come and look and check to see if you have more than 500 gallons. So, um, you know, they don't know about me, then <laughs> they don't know if I'm collecting any rainwater. So, let's see. Huppel's cat says it's been pouring all summer here. Ground is drenched. Um, looks like you guys are talking about uh, food. I don't know what kind of food. Yeah, food's definitely more important than, than money. I mean, you have to have a certain amount of money, but you think of the way our ancestors lived. You know, they traded a lot of things. Um, and I think if we could develop some bartering sources, that would be good. If you guys ever listen to a guy named Selco, he has um, a website, shtfplan.com. I believe that's it. Yeah. And he was a guy that lived in the Baltics during the Civil War, and he lived in a bombed-out city for over a year. If you want to get a, a check on what it what it takes, you know, to live in a war-torn country, um, you know, he's got a lot of valuable information over there. Um, I agree with Susan. Trade chocolate, ammo, guns, cigarettes, and liquor. Those have always been the standbys. So there, uh, think about it. There's a reason it's called the Bureau of um, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. I mean, somebody tell me what all of those things have in common. <laughs> Seemingly nothing except as barter items. <laughs> yeah, dog having nightmares. Food forest, yeah, I, that's what I'm working on, Pacific. Um, if you don't know what a food forest is, um, you know, check out Pacific Permaculture. He can probably educate you better than I can on that, but... Uh, all right. Dad says they do now. They do now what, Dad? Let me know what you're talking about. All right. Old Rottweiler is old and dreams alike. Let's see. <laughs> Minute Man says what the ATF has in common is all illegal constitutionally. Yeah. Yeah, and coffee is a good one too. You're right. Now, see, I don't drink. I don't drink. I don't smoke, and I don't drink coffee because I'm a Mormon, and uh, you know we we don't believe in doing those things. I'm not saying that I haven't. I have done all of those, um, but I don't currently do those, and don't plan on taking those uh, habits up again in my life. Um, but I know a lot of people do, and the fact of the matter is during a crisis situation, those things are valuable, and you can trade them for things that you need. And uh, if you want to read a good book, uh, let me see if I can get the title for you. I believe it's uh, in my show notes that what the title is. 
in just one second. Let me see if I can find it. Pardon the key clicks while I look for it for you guys. Let's see here. I believe it's called Blockade. Okay, yeah, here we go. It's called, uh, this book is called Blockade, The Diary of an Austrian Middle Class Woman, 1914 to 1924. So this was the blockade of Austria during World War One. They were cut off from all supplies coming in and out of the country. And um, she talks about in there how her, her husband had actually died in the middle of all this, uh, the deprivation that was going on. And uh, but he was a collector of fine cigars. And she talks in there how he traded, uh, or excuse me, how she traded those cigars on the black market um, for the things that she needed. In fact, the government had made a law that you couldn't store food. They called it hoarding. And don't think that that couldn't happen again. And um, who knows how I collect water. <laughs> Hey, I have, you know, maybe I'll do a video sometime about um, um, how you can build some water collection systems that don't look like water collection systems. Out of sight, out of mind, you know? All right. Yeah, underground reservoir. Yeah, so she traded these cigars for things that she needed, and the government had actually made... Uh, food storage illegal and they called it hoarding and they developed a department of you know who the heck knows what it was called that would go around and would check to see if you had more than your fair share sounds like a socialist uh, sentence right and uh, if you had more than they thought you should have they would take it with under the guise of dividing it equally among the people but was what was really going on is the people that would come around and collect this stuff were corrupt and they could be bought. And she ended up trading some cigars to the guy that was actually in charge of doing that. She traded them with, uh, to a farmer uh, for some stuff. She actually raised rabbits in her cellar. And um, so very, very good book. If you guys get a chance to read that book, a very eye-opening, realistic view on what a black market looks like, uh, what governments do in, in those times. And, um, you know, maybe how if you history tends to repeat itself. So you read these things and you learn some lessons and, and take precautions accordingly. All right, guys, I've been uh, at this for an hour and uh, 15 minutes, I think. And so I think I'm going to wrap it up. I don't know if Minuteman is going to um, fire up the live pirate radio again but if he is go over and join him on that and listen to some great tunes um, yeah there's some books in World War II there's a lot of great books um, that tell you really what it looks like you know I, it's not a lot of what people think it's gonna look like alright so Minuteman is going to go over and fire up pirate radio so go check him out and uh, put in some music requests. Thanks for tuning in, in, everybody. And, you know, also, if you haven't subscribed yet and you like what we're doing here at the Forging Freedom Podcast, uh, you know, subscribe and hit the like button and uh, make sure you hit that little bell so that you can be informed of when we are doing different things over here. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. If you know somebody that likes this kind of stuff, help us by sharing the channel with them. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great evening. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>